This video is made possible by the fantastic Sunward Hobbies. Please stay tuned to the end of this video for more information about this amazing store. Hello everyone, Rebels of Cloud 9 here, and in this video I'm going to be building Tamiya's 148 scale F14D Tomcat. This model will be built in VF2 Bounty Hunter markings from 2003, just before they were retired. This is my second time building this kit. It's very involved and incredibly well detailed, but it's so much fun to build. As you'll see, this model lives up to all the hype. There are a lot of tiny details in the cockpit. What I really like is that Tamiya made these details very defined so that they stand out and are easy to paint. Also, the cockpit can be posed open or closed when desired, so none of these details are ever lost. There is a lot of detail crammed into the cockpit, and a lot of the build was spent painting these small details. I was really impressed with how much Tamiya got in there. I began by painting the tub with XF-19 Sky Grey. Then, I painted the console panels. I kept them partially attached to the sprue to make it easier to paint. Next, I masked and painted the consoles with XF-1 Flat Black. When the paint had dried, I began painting in the selected buttons with various acrylics. The buttons are quite high, so this made painting them, even at such a small scale, quite easy. And it was incredibly satisfying to see these panels glued into the cockpit tub. For the instrument panel shrouds, I painted the back sections flat black. The front sections are a strange purple covering. Tamiya suggests a 1-1 mix of flat earth and purple. And yes, I do mix my paints in the airbrush. It's a strange color for sure, but it is accurate. I then added some flat white to the remaining paint in my airbrush and lightly painted on some faded purple to the base layer. This helped create the authenticity that this is more of a used F-14, which is what I was going for since these were retired in 2003. The forward wheelbase section will sit just below the cockpit tub. I began by priming the parts with Mr. Surfacer 1200. This is my preferred primer, as it is a tough lacquer based primer that grips well into the plastic and doesn't cover up the smaller details. After the Mr. Surfacer had dried, I lightly layered on XF2 flat white, adding smaller light layers to help reduce paint buildup and provide a much brighter white than trying to spray it on all at once. When I had the white painted on, I painted on several of the tubes and other details, sealing them in with a gloss coat for weathering. I used Tamiya Panoline accent color, dark gray, in an enamel-based wash and brushed it all over the interior sections to highlight the details and provide a layer of dirt and grime. After the wash was painted on, 
I left it to dry for about 24 hours, then, using a clean brush and some enamel thinner, I was able to remove the sections of the excess paint I didn't want. It may sound excessive, but I found leaving enamel washes to dry for 24 hours makes them easier to clean and control what excess paint I want removed. It also provides a much more realistic looking result. Tammy includes with this D version four different Tomcats to choose from. So, if you have a specific F14 in mind when you want to build this kit, likely you're going to have parts for that project. I'm now adding all the consoles to the main cockpit tub, as well as the sidewall details that were painted earlier. I'm going to add the pilot and Rio towards the end of this build. It's incredible that even with the figures added, most of these details in the cockpit will still remain visible. One of the most satisfying parts of this model kit is just watching how all of the parts will simply fall into place. Even with some of the more complicated build sections, I never once got stuck building. Anytime there was a fault with the kit, it was due to my own error. Just watch how effortlessly the cockpit and forward landing gear bay fit into this middle section, and then that just fits simply into the pegs of the nose section. The engineering is simply incredible and I couldn't help but shake my head in amazement so many times throughout this build. Watch how the two upper fuselage halves simply fit together with such precision. Again, it's amazing to see complicated joints fit together like this. Even though this is a complicated and involved kit, I have to share several sentiments online that this kit is so well designed that even a beginner could build this model. This is possibly my favorite section to showcase the design with this kit. One of the times when you think this is too complicated to fit and then in typical Tamiya fashion, the part fits perfectly, going over the ramp flap and fitting within the side wall of the landing gear bay detail perfectly.
When I was sanding the wing edge, I lost some of the recessed panel details, so I used my Tamiya scribing saw to carefully rescribe the lost detail. I then used Mr. Hobby, Mr. Cement S, and brushed this into the panel lines. The liquid glue would flow into the panel lines and smooth out the details. The forward window on the F14 has been a very discussed subject. Most of the time it's painted on too dark. It's a very lightly tinted window, and I used two drops of X25 clear green and one drop of X23 clear blue. I painted this onto the inside of the canopy, which I cleaned prior to painting. This paint goes on with a bit of an orange peel effect, but after a while it dries completely level. I took care to create a very light tint to this window as I had seen on real F14s. Decals are provided for the lower fins, however, I didn't want to use these. I decided to mask off as much as I could. I photocopied the decal sheet, then placed packing tape over the stars. Then I used my LED photo light as a makeshift light table and carefully cut out the stars with Tamiya tape. This took several tries to get right and I almost gave up several times, but in the end I was quite satisfied with the results. I did try to cut out the VF2 but these were just too difficult for me to cut. So for this part, I ended up using the decal. Tamiya Chrome Yellow is a paint I've wanted to use on a project for a long while now. It's a really beautiful yellow that stands out on the Bounty Hunter F14s. This paint was decanted from the rattle can to be used in my airbrush. I've created a video on my channel explaining how to decant spray paint for airbrushing if you're interested in this process. If it's possible to have paint as a nemesis, X3 Royal Blue is mine. Of all the Tamiya paints I've used, I had a really hard time getting this one thinned to a proper balance and getting it to layer on properly. So I ended up with some paint buildup along the tape edge that I later had to sand down. Now I'm carefully removing the star stencils that I made, and I'm pleased to report that these worked out really well. Next I'd cut out the VF2 decals and seal these in with a gloss coat. And don't worry about those fingerprints, they instantly vanished when the gloss coat was applied. This next stage can be really stressful, and that's removing the thin seam line on the canopy section. Don't worry about the lines on the inside, those are the antenna and they're supposed to be there. I started with a 4000 grit sanding sponge. Note the direction that I'm sanding in. After I sanded away the seam line, I took 600 grit and sanded in the opposite direction. This is to help remove the previous sand marks as you gradually progress to higher grits of sandpaper. I finished with a 10,000 grit. This almost brought the canopy back to complete clarity. I used a liberal amount of Novus 2, a plastic polish, and with a cotton bud, I polished the paste into small circles. If you missed any of the scratches, simply repeat the sanding process before you apply more Novus. The final step is to wipe away the excess Novus 2 and apply a good amount of Novus 1. Novus 1 is a plastic polish. It also keeps static off of the clear parts and reduces finger marks that might be left behind.
And here's the finished result, a bright and clear canopy that is ready for masking. When I was researching VF2 online, I found an interesting picture that showed a bounty hunter turning and revealing heavily scratched drop tanks. This is from the drop tanks being scratched while landing on the carrier deck. Since it's on the underside, you won't really see it, but it'll be a fun detail to add to the model. I painted on AK Extreme Metal Polished Aluminum, and then added a gloss coat, as this paint was more delicate than I had expected. I then used Mr. Masking Soul Neo and painted on the scratches. Once the Masking Soul Neo had dried, I airbrushed XF63 German Grey to replicate the primer. I then added more Masking Soul Neo, this time to the edges of the previous layer. I painted the final color, light ghost grey, and with a cocktail stick I carefully removed the masking to reveal the silver and grey paints. As I mentioned before, it's a detail you won't easily notice, but it adds some more character to this model. I started painting the engine nozzles with XF2 flat white, then I masked off these panels. Next, XF63 German Grey was painted, and then I masked off the entire inside section so I could paint the exterior. The outer metallic color is a really beautiful mixture. It's two parts X31 titanium gold and one part X32 titanium silver. I then glossed the nozzles and hand painted the rest of the smaller details before weathering. I mentioned before with X3 Royal Blue being a difficult color to paint, I'm sad to say that with this new Tamiya LP37 Light Ghost Grey, I had even more trouble. I had to wrestle with this paint a lot, and eventually I painted very thin layers and gradually built up the color. This took a very long time to do as there was a lot of this model to paint. Unlike the light ghost grey, the dark ghost grey LP36 sprayed on perfectly. I masked off the lower section with silly putty. This created a really nice curve going around and under the nose. The upper grey color was another custom mix, using two parts XF19 Sky Grey and one part XF82 Ocean Grey. It's a very nice looking color, but I do question if it's a bit too dark for low vis colors.
The formation lights, or slime lights, come with the kit as decals. However, I chose to paint these on. I played around with the paints that I had and I came up with this mixture. One part XF4 yellow-green and four parts XF76 grey-green. I added a bit of white to brighten up the paint. However, I think for future builds, I might try adding a bit of X24 clear yellow. This was also the first project where I got to really test out my new Tamiya decal scissors. These were incredibly handy when I had to trim the excess decal film on these large pendant decals, as this allowed me to lay the decals really close to the canopy edge. It's one of the tools you don't use all the time, but you're really glad when you have them. They really made some of the bigger decals easier to work with. Sometimes a decal just likes to sit where it was laid down, and to fix this I dipped my decal brush in water and I was slowly able to move the decal into place. Tamiya decals have a bit of a reputation for being thick and stubborn to conform to the surface. But with the new Tamiya MarkFit Super Strong Decal Solvent, the majority of the decals fell snug into place with minor silvering on a few, and that was very easy to fix. The only decal troubles I had was with some of the larger ones, like on the nose and tail. This required a few extra coats of the solvent. One of my favorite stages is adding a panel line wash to a model. Once again, I used Tamiya panel line accent color dark gray. I also left this alone to dry for 24 hours. Then, using a cotton bud dipped in enamel thinner, I was able to easily remove the excess paint and keep the rest of the panel lines. It's a bit tricky to paint the red sealer that goes around the landing gear doors. To make things easier, I used Tamiya X7 red enamel paint. And after each door section was painted, I took a clean brush and some enamel thinner and immediately cleaned off the excess paint. This was to prevent the red from staining the white paint, as I had learned from a previous attempt. To weather the inside of the nozzles, I used Tamiya Weathering Masters. Here I used oil stain to create a burnt effect. They're very quick and easy to use, and they add a great layer of detail. I wanted to create a layer of grime and dirt over the entire aircraft, so I took some thinned enamel paint, XF66 light grey, and I painted it into every panel section of the Tomcat, allowing the paint to completely dry.
I found this interesting makeup brush that looked like it would be good for stippling paint. I slowly dabbed away the light gray paint, carefully removing the layers until I was satisfied with the dirt effect. This was a really fun process, but I think next time I'll leave a lot more of the paint on, as, sadly, when I added a flat coat, a lot of the grime sort of disappeared. Which brings us to the next stage. To seal in the enamel paints and prepare for a final assembly, I added a flat coat of Mr. Color Aqueous Flat Clear. This is a fantastic flat finish that really brings out the original color of the paints. I learned this trick from a modeler in Thailand, and it's a great way of achieving the swept wing effect. I took a compass tool and a wide paintbrush. Then I added in a small mixing bowl several enamel gray paints and a bit of dark brown. I then added some extra thinner so that it would all flow easier. I took the compass and created these nice even sweeps. It's just as easy as that. I purchased the new Tamiya F14 detail set. This comes with enough for two Tomcats, and I was really excited to add the mirrors to the canopy. I started with an acrylic canopy glue, but I switched later to super glue. I had to be very careful as to avoid frosting the clear parts. They were a bit tricky to add on, but they look really cool when the canopy is posed open. For some of the more delicate parts like the weapons pylons and the drop tanks, I used Mr. Hobby Mr. Just Super Glue. This is a very strong super glue that should prevent damage for those times when I'm being clumsy. The ejection seats require a bit more pressure to install them to the cockpit floor. I held onto the nose section as to not damage the landing gear. I also took the back of a paintbrush to apply just a bit more pressure. The pilot and Rio were easily installed into their seats, and these figures look fantastic. Tammy has lately been trying to produce very realistic looking figures to add to their models, and these certainly look at home. I especially like that the pilot has his hand on the control stick and the other on the throttle. For the Rio, I modified his right arm to hold a camcorder, as this was something I saw in footage online of VF2, and I thought it would be a fun detail to add.
And this wraps up my build of the Tamiya F14D Tomcat. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching. Until next time, this is Robsuit Cloud 9 signing out. If you like the model in this video and you want one for yourself, then you need to do yourself a favor and visit sunwardhobbies.ca. Sunward Hobbies is one of the best modeling stores in North America. They have a fantastic and dedicated team that knows the ins and outs of your hobby needs. They work hard to keep their website and store up to date with the latest and newest model kits and related modeling products. And be sure to follow them on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. They post regular updates there so you can see the newest and latest stock. And if you're in the Toronto area, do yourself a favor and stop by their store and see their large selection and inventory for yourself. But for the rest of you outside of Toronto, visit www.sunwordhobbies.ca today and say hello to your newest and favorite hobby shop.